<sighs> Don't ask. Hey, what's up, guys and gals? I'm going to give you all a tutorial on how to suck less at Chrome Hounds. If you're already an experienced player, you don't need to watch this video. This is meant for the minority, so to speak. Comments saying, dude, I already know this shit, or you suck at the game, don't post any more retarded videos, go kill yourself. I will do like KT and reply back with a hateful message with the word balls in it. Enough chit chat, let's do this shit. Chrome Mounts is a tactical mech combat game, almost like Mech Warrior. You're a mercenary fighting for three fictional factions. Duraki is basically the states, Morskoi is Russia, and Salkar is the Middle East. Morskoi makes durable parts and powerful weapons at the expense of weight. Salkar makes lightweight parts and high mobility chassis at the expense of durability. Tarakia is basically in the middle. Alright, as soon as you get the game, play story mode. Let me quote Dirk Eject in saying that it is the gaming equivalent of watching paint dry. It gets really repetitive and the story itself is pretty lackluster. You just want to get as many parts as you can. The best way to get all S ranks in story mode is to use a PBA, an assault rifle wheel cart. For the commander story arc, the default hound will do just fine, but it's always a good idea to experiment with as many parts as you can. When you are finished, or just give up on the story mode, head over to the online component of Chrome Hounds. Now this is where the game really shines. Originally, the producers of this game meant for players to play with hounds that just look cool and have an open cockpit, but now the game has been shaped by the community, ushering new eras of hound builds and gameplay styles. This game's online community is so large, a social network was created just for it. There are so many good people who are willing to help anyone out, but there are also some people who are born to make your life miserable and kill your potential babies. Some Chrome Hounds players play by the honor code, which includes the ideas that players should not shot wait, dial, disconnect, bridge, or send hate mail to other players. When you play the Norims 4 against other people, you will find out the hard way that only about 5% of people go by the code. In order to counteract this, you will need to get used to the game's gameplay mechanics and make sure you master at least one type of weapon. In story mode, it explains to you that there are 6 different role types. Soldier, Sniper, Scout, Commander, Defender, and Heavy Gunner. Determined by the type of weapon you use, RTs are just a basic summary of your hound build. Nowadays, it's more like how you use your weapons determines your definite RT. For example, you can be a soldier and use only cannons, a defender-oriented weapon. When you join the Noramus War, you will be given a decent amount of money and a choice to join one of three fictional factions. It is recommended that you join Selkar first because they have some of the lightest and most maneuverable chassis in stock. Plus, they have the best grenade launchers. Now, when building a hound, Try to make it as slim as possible without exposing the cockpit. Most of the time, players will use spacers, shields, and assist parts as primary means to defend the cockpit from head-to-head -head combat. Because firepower must balance with mobility and durability, most hounds are exposed from behind or on the sides, rendering them vulnerable. Use this exploit to your advantage during team-based matches where you could shoot an unsuspecting enemy and get an instant kill. During the hound making process, press X while scrolling through the weapons to switch between different weapon types faster. Press the right trigger to undo or redo a hound attachment, and while adding light arms weapons, use the D-pad to change the weapon's muzzle position, and press the X button to change the weapon's direction and position. Just screw around with the options and you'll get used to it in no time. Weapons of choice include, but are not limited to, grenade launchers, sniper cannons, cannons, assault rifles, shotguns, heavy cannons, and sometimes howitzers. There are many other weapons you can experiment with, but they are not as effective during most situations. Here are some of the most commonly used builds. The Sidewinder, Triple Single, AR Nader, Steward 3 and 3, and the infamous Shino card. If this is your first time playing the game, don't, I repeat, don't join an enormous war match by yourself. 
either host the match and grind bots until you have acquired a lot of cash and have an adequate library of parts, or try and make friends with people who are good at the game. If you suck so much that even bots can make you their bitch, you can always do individual missions for a disappointing amount of money. Okay, that's all the wisdom I've got to offer. Hopefully this video will turn the influx of newbies in the servers into the next super freaks or something. It's a really big shame that the servers are closing for good in January of 2010. Alright guys, this has been TJ, reminding you to never stick your ass in your penis. People will think of you differently. Take for example Alex990033. Haha, <laughs> peace out bitches.